In the annals of history, the conquests of Alexander the Great stand as a testament to human ambition and the thirst for power. From the sweeping deserts of Persia, which he conquered along with Egypt, Phoenicia, Palestine, Babylonia, Assyria, and Asia Minor, Alexander commanded a vast empire. Yet, unsatisfied, he ventured further, invading the mystical lands of India. As he journeyed, tales of the mystics and sages of the East reached his ears, igniting his curiosity. During his travels, he came to know of a yogi named Danbamis, who sat in meditation on the banks of the Sindhu River. Alexander commanded his soldiers to bring the yogi so that he could gain wisdom. A party of soldiers went to the yogi and ordered him to come to Alexander, but the yogi refused. The messenger said, Alexander the Great has conquered the world. What have you accomplished? Your king is actually a prisoner. Shocked, the soldiers returned to Alexander and recounted everything. Enraged, Alexander, along with his soldiers, confronted the yogi again, saying, I am Alexander the Great, who has conquered the world. What have you accomplished? The yogi laughed and replied, You are a prisoner, not a conqueror. Shocked, Alexander asked angrily, What? The yogi replied, I have conquered the desire to conquer the world. You are a prisoner of your desire. Upon hearing these words, Alexander fell into deep thought, admiring the yogi's wisdom, and left quietly. It is said that soon after this encounter, Alexander invited a number of Brahmin ascetics noted for their skill in answering philosophical questions with pithy wisdom to Taxila. Alexander himself framed all the questions. Which is more numerous, the living or the dead? The living for the dead are not. Which breeds the larger animals, the sea or the land? The land, for the sea is only a part of land. Which is the cleverest of beasts? That one with which man is not yet acquainted. Which existed first, the day or the night? The day was first by one day. This reply surprised Alexander, and the Brahmin added, Impossible questions require impossible answers. How best may a man make himself beloved? A man will be beloved if, possessed with great power, he still does not make himself feared. How may a man become a god? By doing that which it is impossible for a man to do. Which is stronger, life or death? Life, because it bears so many evils. Upon hearing the answers, Alexander was so impressed by a yogi named Kalanos, a devotee of goddess Kali, that he asked him to come to Macedonia to gain knowledge. But when Kalanos refused, Alexander, unable to accept this rejection, captured him and brought him along. However, this was a mistake, as Alexander soon discovered. Seeking knowledge through force contradicted the core principles of seeking and learning in Hinduism. When they reached Persia, Kalanos chose to end his aged body's journey by entering a funeral pyre before the Macedonian army. Historians noted the soldier's astonishment at the yogi's lack of fear of pain or death as he remained unmoved amidst the flames. Before his cremation, Kalanos embraced his companions but refrained from bidding farewell to Alexander, only remarking, I shall see you soon in Babylon. Alexander left Persia but died a year later in Babylon. His Indian guru's words had been a prophecy indicating his presence with Alexander in life and death. In 305 BC, Emperor Chandragupta decisively defeated Alexander's general, Seleucus. Seven years later, he relinquished the reins of India's government to his son. Chandragupta then spent the last 12 years of his life as a penniless ascetic, seeking self-realization in a rocky cave at Shravanabelagola, a shrine near Mysore.